Hello, my name is Matt Cannon. I'm a senior Android developer here at Grindr, currently working on version 3 of the Grindr application on Android. This talk is titled, How to Use TDD for Mobile Development on Android. When I joined Grindr, I was excited that Grindr was embracing modern development practices. Grindr had brought in Scott Downey as an Agile coach. I knew Scott had done impressive work coaching MySpace on Agile while I was leading their Android development team. I've used the methodologies I learned there as a reference ever since. Currently, Grindr is engaged in creating its V3 client on iOS and Android. Our goal was to implement a rigorous system of testing, unit testing, automated testing, internal QA, and external QA. To achieve this, we are using test-driven development practices to produce high-quality code and to keep the code quality high throughout the process. We wanted a V3 client architecture that was geared for testing, so we partnered with Pivotal Labs, who are experts in TDD on Android. They helped us rapidly set up our testing framework using Android Studio, Gradle, JUnit, RoboElectric, CircleCI, SonarCube, and Sucuru. Before any code is written, Grindr's process is for product, QA, and development to work together to define each user's story. When a story is ready, QA will produce the test plan, and development will use the story and the test plan to prepare our unit tests using JUnit before any application code is written. If a new class is needed in our application code, a corresponding test class will be written. Otherwise, new tests are added to an existing test class for any new functionality. The test should verify the outcomes of the user story, what activities, dialogues, fragments, and views are opened, and their state. RoboElectric and its shadow classes are used to simulate Android OS behavior quickly in regular Java code and for verifying application state. When writing tests, we may have to stub out the corresponding class in our application code. For example, to create grinder view test, we have to create grinder view. But at this point, we are only stubbing out the visible methods in grinder view that we need to write grinder view test. We then run our tests, expecting them to fail. This step's important. Sometimes tests you expect to fail pass, and this can reveal unexpected application behavior. Whenever we have a failing test, we then need to write the application code required for the test to pass. Often, partway through this process, we will find that new classes will have to be written to cover specific functionality being tested in the current failing tests. At that point, we pause and write up a new test class and begin the process over again. We may also think of more tests that need to be written. We can always pause development of application code to improve our test code. When we have written the application code we think we need, we run the test again. If it fails, we continue the cycle, writing the application code needed for the unit test to pass. Sometimes, we don't know enough to write the test. For example, when integrating a third-party library, we might not know what its methods return or the details or order of the events it sends us. At that point, we spike. A spike task is when we write and run code to explore behavior, to learn what we need to in order to write our unit tests. We might need to spike to learn the result codes and SDK returns, or the exact state our unit test should be looking for to verify success. When a story is completed, we will have added multiple tests, and all tests, old and new, should pass. Upon committing and pushing the code, our continuous integration system, CircleCI, immediately fires off debug and production builds, runs all of our tests again, and fires off our analytics tools, including SonarCube. These tools will test code coverage and verify proper Android code practices. If it all checks out, the build is uploaded to Hockey App, and internal QA can verify application behavior on device against the pre-written test plan. We use Sukuru to generate a dashboard that summarizes SonarCube's output. It specifically highlights code coverage, complexity, duplication, and any rule violations. In my experience, the act of writing the test makes writing the code much easier. It forces us to determine the expected output at the beginning of the process. Our V3 development has been going well, our code coverage remains high, and we have a good suite of tests. Recently, we performed a major refactor, and being able to run all of our existing tests made it simple to verify we had maintained existing functionality. It is surprisingly easy to break a test in completely unexpected areas. That pretty much describes how Grindr's Android team does TDD. I hope you found it useful.